add to that mix. 23 minutes to 7 o'clock. I wonder if you've ever thought about renting a grapevine. Me neither. But now I can't stop thinking about it because that is something that is increasingly available. One of the places that's doing it is a place called uh, Shiraz Republic. Brian Spencer is the president. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Hilary. Now, how did you realise that this is something people might want to be involved in? Oh, we've been, we, we specialise in selling grapes to home winemakers for many years. So we knew there was a home wine market that people loved making wine, who had a family tradition of doing it. But then there was a whole other group of people who just loved wine but had no idea how to do it. And so I suppose it grew out of the experiential gifts that have grown over the years of, you know, hot air balloons and hot laps of cord and that sort of thing. And we thought, well, this is an experience that they could give to someone they love and who loves wine. And... Uh, went from there. So it, it, there's a, a gift voucher system, is there, where you can uh, let someone be involved? Yes, yes, and, and generally the rest of the you know the family sort of get involved as well in the wine making process. And um, yeah, but it, it, uh, it sort of started off as that idea of an experiential gift for um, people that don't know how to do it. But also, um, it's it's a fairly flexible idea because we've actually got someone that does rent like two whole rows and wants to become a commercial. Um, winemaker and this is a way of him testing the water he started off buying a couple of hundred kilos for a couple of years and then has gone on to you know making a few tons and how hands-on does it get do people actually come in and help you with the stomping oh yes yes so we have people come up and they can pick their own so they generally go out and we'll take the families out and pick their own grapes and i explain to them how we believe that you know wine really does start in the vineyard and it's how we have vineyard practices and pruning techniques and that to set the crop loads and really affect the quality of the fruit, um, you know, I'd, I'd still maintain that 80% of what happens in good wine starts out in the vineyard and um, the rest of it's just nursing it through to make wine. And I've been hearing that sometimes people get so keen they want to bring their own compost in for you. <laughs> yes, yes, I've had, again, people want to put some uh, biodynamic fertilisers on or things like that and just, it's, look, it's a... It's about people having that opportunity to get involved as much as they want to in the process. We we talk about it as a democracy of wine, you know, wine for the people, by the people. <laughs> it's certainly a sharing thing, isn't it? And I'm, Brian, I'm wondering um, if it's people from the city who are mainly interested in this or, or people's, uh, people locally, because you're just north of Heathcote. Yeah, I'm mostly from the city, mostly from the city. We've got a few people from Bendigo and... But we've had someone as far as well, we've a couple from Sydney um, and one from Doha, flew in from Doha to, to do it. That is so. unbelievable. <laughs> That's a long haul flight to get involved in winemaking. Why don't yeah, they just well, go to Spain? Yeah, they around a week, so they, they picked and made it and crushed it and then they hung around for a week and came back and pressed it off. So, yeah, it's a big commitment, but they loved it. Well, and at, at the end, there's obviously the wine payoff. What kind of things are people naming their signature wine bottles? Oh, well, often it's got their, one of their names on it, and but um, they get to write the back blurb as well, so it's plenty of opportunity to talk about getting better with age and all the metaphors about life as a, a good wine. It would be worth it just to be able to write your own wine label, I think. <laughs> how much does it cost us out of interest, Brian? Because I guess there, there's a sliding scale, isn't it, depending on how yeah, many wines? Yeah, so depending on how, and quantity. So the, the sort of starter one's about... Uh, 25 litres and it's about $400 and that takes you through from getting involved in pruning if you want to to picking and then we nurse it through and people come back to you know do the other middle processes racking off and taking out some of the sediment and through to bottling and uh, they, you know it costs the bottles and everything so yeah. It's really interesting isn't it that, that there's such a need for people that they're really keen to get involved in not only doing something collaboratively, but uh, something very hands-on and creative. Well, yes, and very feet-on as well. I think almost everybody wants to get into that and um, have a stomp. <laughs> yeah, that's the iconic image, isn't it? The purple coat of feet. Is. <laughs> I've we always even wondered... had a bride and groom who had a wedding here, and the bride and groom got in in their wedding gear. And, um, yeah. Oh, good heavens. So you've got this purple <laughs> stained meringue. <laughs> Uh, I think she only wanted to use the dress once. No, okay, fair enough. I've often wondered, do you have to really thoroughly wash your feet before you get in and stop wine grapes? Oh, uh, we always do. Look, it's a fairly acidic um, solution, so it's actually fairly hostile to bacteria. But, yeah, we always clean everything and people hose their feet off before and after, obviously. Yeah, that sounds like a good precautionary principle, I think. 
Well, Brian, we've got uh, Joe on the line who is uh, involved in this kind of thing. Uh, morning, Joe. Hi, how are you? Not bad. You were calling in from North Baldwin. How did you get involved and what was it like? Well, actually, I saw it on Facebook and I thought this would be a fantastic thing to get the family together and do and uh, I have adult children and, and do it. None of them were interested, so we did it with my brother and sister-in-law and we had the best time. We've been up three times and we're looking forward to a long weekend, Brian. Uh, good, Joe. <laughs> That's really interesting, Joe. So the kids were not up for it at all, but the adults no. were like, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> so it's the older ones, but um, we've just we've just had the best time. I've been very interested in in uh, learning all about it because we're a complete novice. I have no idea what to do, and Brian and and uh, have been so helpful and and so inviting and welcoming. We feel like we are a citizen of the Republican part of the family. Well, and uh, we should point out that this is not the only place that this is available. There are other places in the Macedon Ranges and the Adelaide Hills as well, but it's an interesting thing that's that's occurring. And Joe, what's the main attraction for you? Is it is it the process or the end product? Oh, a bit of both, I think. I've made cheese and we've made beer and we've made cassata with our Italian friends, so we like that sort of home produce thing. But I do like a good red, and it's a good red. <laughs> if it's anything like what Brian has um, been producing, and I'm sure it will be. We, we can only hope. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thanks for calling in, Joe, and letting us know about that. And Brian, thank you for explaining how it works. Uh, have you got much of a, a waiting list? Oh, no, no, we've got plenty of space. We're actually in the process of building, uh, expanding the building to accommodate better for um, the growth that we're expecting with it. It's, a, it's certainly an idea that seems to have taken off the last couple of years. Indeed, it's an idea of its time. Well, Brian, more power to you and thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much, Hilary. Brian Spencer, President of the Shiraz Republic. I wonder if he gets a special hat. Uh, just north of Heathcote, it's 14 minutes to 7.